You're in the house of the Lord, and I'm telling you, you're here for a good message today. I wrote a lot of things starting on Monday. I kept writing and sequestering myself to read the scriptures, and I kept writing, and, and God said, no, that's good for later. I kept writing, that's good for later. I said, okay, God, what's good for now? And it finally, I finally was able to make connection with what was good for now. And uh, God is faithful. If we just hang in there and keep looking and keep seeking his face, he will show us. We're just a little slow sometimes. I was slow in school. And so I guess it continues on a little bit. But he finally gets hold of our hearts and our minds and spirit and speaks to us as we're able to hear. He's always speaking. Sometimes we're just not able to hear. Believers in the hands of a powerful God. That was the word. And he gave me a beautiful picture to go along with that message for today. Believers in the hands of a powerful God. I actually did a takeoff on a message that was done in 1741. A little different twist to the message in 1741. But um, the message today is to prepare you. I said the message today is to prepare you for what's on the way. There's a lot of stuff on the way. And I hope you'll keep this message. I went over a hundred scriptures and chose very particular scriptures for this two page here that we have. So I want you to hold on to this. We have extra copies. We'll make a thousand of them if we need them to give them out to people. But uh, this message is to prepare us for what's on the way. You got to know that you know that you know what you know. I mean, get it down into your spirit for real. It's not that I know this. No, I know that I know that I know this. And that's the kind of thing I want you to see this message in that light. David's incredible praise and, and incredible prayer. And a portion of that in verse 11 of 1 Chronicles 29. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in the heaven and all that is in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord. You are exalted as head above all. No similar words in the Lord's Prayer, verse 13 of Matthew 6. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Everybody say amen. amen. Don't you just like this prayer and praise of David? Thine, O Lord, is the greatness. Oh, yes. And that wasn't enough. And the power and the glory. That wasn't enough. And the victory. And the majesty. For all that is in the heaven, all that is in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom. O Lord, thou art exalted as head above all. How many knows that he is head above all today? Yes. Yes. July the 8th, 1741 at Enfield, Connecticut. One of the most famous sermons ever preached was presented by a former Yale student, Jonathan Edwards. The sermon that he preached was titled, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. Well, it is a historic message. Now, I did a twist on it. Powerful believers in the hands of a powerful God. With this sermon, Reverend Edwards sought to convince the listeners 
that they were deprived sinners who would be condemned to hell unless they returned to Christ and trusted in His grace for salvation. His message was taken from the Old Testament of God's warning to Israel that judgment was on the way. How many believes that even though this was preached in 1741, that we know that now, even in 2021, judgment is on the way. It's on the way. As Reverend Edwards reached the sermon's closing, the people broke out in such screams and wails that he could not finish his remarks. It was reported that people hearing the message could feel the heat and the flames of hell at their feet. We really need that kind of conviction today of being lost, don't we? especially today in light of where our world is headed. Some reports even that I read years ago that there were claw marks on the wooden pews where people under such conviction felt they were slipping into hell down through the floor of the church and they were with their fingernails they were scraping and they were clawing and made indentions into the wood of the pew in front of them because they were holding on for dear life because they felt themselves seeking into hell while the message was being preached. Think about that. And as I thought about that from my twist in the message today, oh God, send that kind of conviction again. And it's, it's, good, it's going to take that to bring people to Christ, don't you think? I think people that are lost out here just feel like they can just go from one day to the next and there's no, there's no consequence to their lives. But we know there is consequence. And we do know that people are lost that are around us. But my message today is to believers, and that's us here today. You know, last Sunday I talked about the beauty of our salvation, the progression of our redemption. I talked about how behind our confession of faith, you know, the confession of faith in Christ and the cross that Jesus died and rose again and died and rose for our forgiveness. It seems like such a simple confession of faith, but behind that confession is the miraculous working of God to bring us to that place, to translate us from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light, from the kingdom of bondage to the kingdom of his dear son. There's a lot of incredible, miraculous works of God behind that. And that was the purpose of last week's message. Today, I want to convince you with this message of God's power for God's people. I looked at everything that I could look at to bring this out in the message today. Believers in the hands of a powerful God. I want to convince you. Now, I don't want you to scream at the end, but I would like for you to stand up and say, God's power is keeping me. God's power is enough. God's power is in my life. I would like that for you to do that. Listen, it's time for us to believe that God's power is for God's people for everyday victorious living in a stress-filled time. As we finish out the last days of history, we must believe that God has our back. Come on. God has our back. The whole world is in His hands. Nothing that is happening right now has taken God by surprise. No matter what you see going on in the news, no matter what you see going on in the world, God still is in control. You've got to convince yourself of that. You've got to believe that, that you know, that you know, that you know that is true. It's important. Paul especially images the living of the Christian life as an empowerment from God. You cannot live the Christian life without the empowerment from God. 
Paul's day, dunamis, Paul's day dunamis, which actually is the derivative of dynamite power, and they didn't have dynamite back then. But we know it today of the derivative of that word. Paul's day dunamis, the Greek word translated power, was the dynamic of God's power conveyed through God's message of salvation. We used that last Sunday. For the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Amen. Paul continues to develop that motif of divine power as the key to victorious living by noting unless the believer is empowered by God, it is impossible to please God and it's impossible to live for God. Listen, someone maybe as a non-believer would say, I, I just don't think I could live the Christian life. It's just too much. And you as a believer should look at them and say, you're right. You cannot live a Christian life. But you can when God empowers you. For the gospel is the, the good news. For the gospel is the power of God conveyed to us through the gift of salvation. Amen? Empowered by God. But thanks, 1 Corinthians 15, 57. You know this verse, but you've got to see it in this light today. But thanks be unto God. But thanks be unto God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. God said to me, Paul said, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in your weakness. But thanks be be unto God. But thanks be unto God, which gives us the empowerment to be victorious believers in Christ. Nope, you can't live the Christian life. It's impossible, but not impossible because of God's power conveyed to the gospel through the gift of salvation. And look at this verse of 2 Corinthians 13, 4. His weak human body died on the cross, speaking of Christ. But now he lives by the mighty power of God. We sing that sometimes. He lives, he lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me. He talks with me. Some lady said somebody told her that God was dead. He, she said, no, I just talked to him this morning. He was fine. It's true. Paul goes on and says in 2 Corinthians 13, 4, says his weak human body died on the cross, but now he lives by the mighty power of God. We too, talking about us now, we too are weak in our bodies as he was because he was 100% man and he was 100% God in the flesh. Very complex thing, but it's true. But now we live. But now we live and are strong as he is. And have all of God's power to use. Come on. That's Tay translation. Read the whole thing. He is weak, human body died on the cross, but now he lives. He lives. Yes, he lives by the mighty power of God. We too are weak in our bodies as he was, but now we live and are strong as he is and have all of God's power to use. Come on. That is the ultimate picture of dunamis power of God. And then Acts 1.8, but you shall receive power, not an abstract term by no means, but you shall receive dunamis power of God. If you read the Amplified Version, you shall receive a power, ability, and might. And that's a good delineation of the word dunamis. How many are glad that if we are touched by the Spirit, if we are baptized in the Spirit, if we are filled with the Spirit, if we walk in the Spirit, we walk in power and not in weakness. Amen. 
<laughs> he got it like this. And we are as strong as he is because of the power of God that raised him from the dead. And you know Romans 8, 11, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in us and he'll quicken your mortal body. That's what got your blessed assurance out of bed this morning was the power of God. When we drive over here, Joe and I say, God, just speak to people to get them out of bed. Bed is not a safe place to be. People die in bed. Get out of bed. Get up in the morning. Get up early. And then we go to the back side of your sheet. And what is? <laughs> it just worked out so good. We, we plan how we put things on the, pa on the, on the sheet. We, 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 now, sometimes you see you're using the and mark. It's because we can't finish the line where I want it to finish. So I use the and mark sometimes to save space. So there's a lot of things we do what we do while we do it. But then we go to the back of this page after reading that other. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power in us as believers according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and gave him a place of supreme honor in heaven far above all principalities, powers, might, and dominion far above every other title that can be conferred not only in this world but that which is to come. Yes, yes, yes. Listen. In verse 19 of Paul's prayer, and I, I've often said, Paul's prayer you can't live without. In Paul's prayer of Ephesians 1, it's a prayer you can't live without. In that verse 19, Paul uses four different Greek words for power. Dunamis, ikus is one of them. Ketos, in, in, uh, in, in, energia, which is, I think, uh, comes from the word that we get the word uh, inertia. The power of ability and might, force, strength, kertos, dominion, or energia, active force, or active power. All in that little verse, four Greek words for power Paul uses. I said it's a prayer you can't live without. Okay. I'll try to settle down. God's power is immeasurable and available. I said God's power is immeasurable and available. Can I say that a third time? God's power is immeasurable and available to us believers through faith. Don't forget 2 Timothy 1.7. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind or good mental health, whichever way you want to look at it. Listen, when you get up in the morning, God doesn't want you to get up with fear. He doesn't want you to fear the day because He gives you power to think otherwise. Amen. He gives you the power to look at things in the right way. So when you get up in the morning, God hasn't given me the spirit of negativity. He hasn't given me the spirit of fear. He hasn't given me the spirit where i got to stay in bed because I can't get up and face today. No. He gives you power to think different. I said He gives you power to think different. He gives you power. He gives you His love. And He gives you good mental health to face today. A sound mind. Come on. It's true. And continuing in Ephesians, Paul said, Now unto him that is able, how many knows he's able, to do exceeding and abundant above all that you ask or think, and the Amplified says, even beyond what you can imagine. I like that. I've got several translations here. Let me look at my notes. Now to him that is able to do exceeding abundant above all that you ask or think. Above all our hopes and dreams, Knox says. How many are good dreamers? I'm a dreamer. Now to him above all that we can ask or think. Above all that we can hope or dream. All that we would ever dare to ask. Oh, man, God wants to dare you to ask the unbelievable. All that we would ever dare to ask. 
according to the power that works in us. I'm here glad for his power that works in us. And then we're still in Ephesians. We start in Ephesians, then we keep going down through Ephesians, and then it's just worked out so beautiful in 610. Finally, Paul says, finally, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Be continually strengthened in the power of his might, or in the power which comes from his might. Another translation of that. Don't you like that? Now let's get our breath, because otherwise we may pass out. <laughs> By his power, God saves us. Somebody say amen. amen. By his power, he strengthens us, makes us strong. Yes. And by his power, he keeps us. Man, we're going to need that. We're going to need all of that in the coming days ahead. You're going to need it. I'm telling you right now. And I'm so glad that God makes us smart, too. I mean, I'm telling you, he makes me a lot smarter than I really am and what I would be if it wasn't for him. He just makes us smart. It's amazing. I wish I'd have been a little smarter in academics than when I was in school. But after I got baptized in the Holy Spirit and God began to work in my life, I got a lot smarter. It's amazing. My mother was amazed even. God makes us smarter. Because the Spirit of God and because of the Word of God, His wisdom makes us a lot smarter than we normally would be. And the more you read the Word, the smarter you're going to get. With the right kind of smart. I said with the right kind of smart. By God's mighty power, He saved us. I like that verse 12 of John 1. But as many as received Him, as many who would accept Him, to them. How many, how many knows you're them? Has ever, anybody ever called you a them? I've always had people say, people said, who's they? I don't know who they are. Who said that? But as many as received him or accepted him, to them, that's us, he gave power to become sons and daughters of the living God. There ain't no way you could do it without him giving you the power to become that and do that, right? By his mighty power, he strengthens us. Colossians 1.11, strengthen with all might according to his glorious power. And another translation of Moffat, may his glorious might nerve you with full power. Come on. Do you like that? Yeah. Moffat had it good on that translation of the Greek. May his glorious might or power nerve you with full power. How many believe you want to be on full, full power? Yes. By God's mighty power, he keeps us, 1 Peter 1, 5, who are kept by the power of God through faith. Another translation, and the power of God protects you by faith. Come on. I'm really glad you're being kept by the power of God. And I like this. I know you're going to like this. By God's mighty power, he gives power to the faint. And you're going to love some of the translations I used on this. He giveth power to the faint. And to them who have no might, he increases strength. This is the one you're going to like. He gives power to the tired and worn out. Anybody there like that? Boy, sometimes, sometimes I feel like I'm still 30, and other times I feel like I'm 100. Aren't you glad he gives power to those who are tired and worn out? 
He gives power to a tired and worn out and strength to the weak. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. He'll give them new strength, one translation says. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall soar with the eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. They have no weariness that wait upon the Lord. They have no weariness, those that wait upon the Lord. Shall I say it a third time? They have no weariness. They that wait upon the Lord. Come on. Now, before you stand up and start hollering, soon Christ is coming in great power and glory and the saints with him. I heard a great voice of much people in heaven. I heard what sounded like a roar of vast throne in heaven. They were shouting, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. And I saw heaven open. It was thrown open. And behold, a white horse and he that sat upon it was called Faithful and True. His eyes were as a flame of fire, flaming fire. On his head were many crowns. He was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And on his robe and leg there was written King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We were saved by his power. We were made strong by his power. We are kept by his power. We're going to be raptured by his power, and we coming back in power and glory with him. It begins with the power of God and it ends with the power of God. Man. And we need God's power all the way through of what God has prepared for us. I want you to keep this because I got a good selection of scriptures that coincide with each other that gives us a picture of us in the hands of God in his power. God is a powerful God. Amen. And you got to remember that. We're going to do communion this morning. We're going to sing a few songs to prepare ourselves. We have plenty of time to do that.